channel. So I mentioned a few videos ago, um, just after I had the move happen and was set this up, that uh, we developed a small leak in the uh, output from my UV. Um, it's in the fitting that is uh, just beneath the uh, flow meter, but um, above the master fitting for the UV sterilizer itself. So um, since then, what I've uh, had running is, um, well, not running is the UV. It, the, I have valves in my plumbing, it's modular. And so that, um, that manifold has been essentially turned off and the UV is unplugged uh, because can't have a leak in the plumbing, right? Um, so yeah, I've finally gotten around to uh, having the time to investigate in more detail. I did attempt uh, an external repair to that leak by uh, painting some PV, uh, PVC glue or the, um, the plumbing glue that we use for our um, fittings around the outside of that joint. It was a long shot but it, and it didn't work. Um, what I'm going to have to do is disconnect uh, the unions, drain the UV because I believe it still is full of water, um, properly drain it, then completely disconnect it and get it out so that I can remove that fitting. Then we'll inspect it in much closer detail external from the tank and I'm going to attempt some repairs to it. Uh, I've got a few ideas, but let's get it out first and um, see if we can uh, get that happening without too much mess, because as you can see, I have a lot of equipment in there. Um, so it's going to be a little tricky to get it out, but um, this is the whole reason I had modular plumbing. So I, it is possible to do what I'm about to do. All right, let's get to it. The leaking fitting in question is this one right here, and it's around this joint here somewhere that the, the leak happens when it's under pressure. So to get at that, um, I've got uh, back here, that tap there is closed. That's the input into the UV. Um, and then it, this is the output, and it goes up um, and then back over to the tank. And you can see here that I have another tap here, which is also closed. Um, to prevent back siphoning um, while it's not running. and But these are all unions, so I can unscrew it here. Uh, I could actually even unscrew it here because this um, flow meter actually also functions as a union. Um, I could unscrew it here, here, and if I wanted to take the whole UV out, uh, you probably can't see, but back there, same, same, same as this fitting, but on the other side. So um, I think all I'm actually gonna have to do is unscrew this one and unscrew probably this one to take this out and then that'll give me the freedom to uh, drain water from inside here if I need to if there is water in here to get the water level down into the UV somewhere then I can unscrew this one and take this whole fitting out so uh, yeah that's what I'm gonna do all right so as you can see the fitting is out um, here it is here, um, it connects up there with the um, pressure, uh, I mean the uh, the flow meter in line as well, I've just got that in the sink, uh, I washed it out a bit. But uh, this here is the joint that was leaking, you, you can see it's a bit messy due to the external glue that I tried to put on it initially to fix the leak but that didn't work. Um, so what I'm planning to do, now that I fully have it out, I'll be able to clean this up and do a much better job of attempting to seal the leak. Um, and we think the leak was coming out of somewhere around this area here. So if we look on the inside, you can see that um, there isn't actually a join there. It's, there's a um, uh, conversion fitting. Um, that's what this, this piece that my thumb is on right now is a conversion fitting, which goes from whatever standard this part of the UV is, some random, I think it's a US standard fitting or something like that, converts down to a more reasonable side with this fitting. Then going into this fitting is a conversion to DIN standard, which is what all of my plumbing is. So metric DIN is all the Sanking plumbing is metric DIN. So inside there is the converter from, I think, the, the US standard or whatever this is to DIN. And that sits inside this 
this slave union here, which has then got a reducer in the top of it up here with some 32 mil pipe, you can see the blue in there, and then finally the, um, the union that goes on the bottom of the um, flow meter, which is also 32 uh, din standard, 32 mil din. So yeah, this is a monstrosity. That There's like six or seven fittings in this. And uh, unfortunately it's a necessary monstrosity. This was the cleanest way to reduce from this giant fitting on the UV and also convert it to 32 mil DIN, um, which is what all of the rest of my plumbing is. Now, even though it's a monstrosity with seven fittings in it, as you can see, there is, there is no uh, reduction in the size of the pipe or restriction in the flow beyond the smallest part, and the smallest part is the blue 32 mil pipe which is consistent with all the rest of my plumbing. So that's important when you are considering building a monstrosity like this, make sure you don't have any restriction in the flow that reduces the size of the water path below your standard piping. So you always use bigger fittings with reducers in them to uh, make these couplings between different standards and things like that. Um, so if this was working perfectly, AKA not leaking, it would, it's perfectly fine and it's not reducing flow and it's the best way to reduce from, uh, this giant UV to 32 mil DIN. However, it is leaking. Uh, so we need to identify the source of the leak. And I think there's, there's two possibilities because, um, repairing from the outside along this joint is probably not going to be very clean. Um, or very effective because an external repair uh, always has the uh, uh, possibility of lifting off the pipe because the pressure is on the inside, not on the outside. So whilst I will be doing that, and I'll be doing it using some priming fluid to clean it up and then this um, pressure PVC cement to sort of bond and melt the plastic together, that's not what I'm relying on to stop the leak. That's more just a clean up. Um, what I want to do is repair it from the inside. And there's two possible entry points of water into this joint here. It's either going to be just here, this seam where my thumb is, where it gets in behind that conversion fitting, which will then travel up and around and then into the leak in here, in here somewhere. Or it's on the other side at... Uh, right down in there where the end of my index finger is right now, um, the, the, the other side of the seam of that, uh, that same reduce, reduction fitting. Um, and so what I intend to do with both of those seams is completely fill them with uh, aqua putty. Essentially, this is a two-part polymer repair compound. Um, you, you, you cut off as much as what you need, you mix it together, and then it's like Play-Doh. You mush it into the area where you're trying to seal, leave it for, what does it say, um, 20 to 30 minutes. You, I'll leave it for probably overnight, to be honest, um, for it to fully cure and set. And ideally, that will completely seal any points of water ingress of however the water is taking a path to leak out of this joint here. Um, so... That's what I'm going to attempt to do. Wish me luck. All right, I'm going to do the putty first. I'm wearing gloves because it says not to get this stuff on your skin, so fair enough. Um, here it is. I'm just going to cut off, maybe start with a small amount. can always add more. Uh, cut that off. And I'll peel off the stuff. Sticker, uh, put it back on the end, I guess. And it has plastic wrap around it as well. So let's find the end of that to remove it. Okay. And yeah, you just need it. There's two parts. There's the white part and the green part. Uh, you just uh, 
fold it over on itself repeatedly. Uh, that's got cardboard in it, that little bit there, so we don't need that. Um, oh yeah, there's sticky stuff, so uh, that's why you want to be wearing gloves, I suspect. Um, and what you want to do is just kind of like mush it into like noodles and then you know, fold the noodle over onto itself and repeat. That's, uh, that's my technique for getting this combined and, and mixed. Um, you can think of this stuff like mixing paint, like mix it until you think it's fully mixed, then mix it some more. Uh, and when you think you've finished, just double it. <laughs> These things really need to be really well combined um, to be super effective. If you don't combine them well enough, they will never set completely. They'll always remain slightly tacky or slightly um, soft. They'll never completely become rock solid salt, like cement and, and do their job properly. So it's, it's for the sake of like an extra few minutes of um, doing this, uh, it can, can seriously be the difference between a job done well that will last forever or a job done really poorly that will uh, not last for very long at all or maybe not even work. All right, so what I'm going to do is take a small amount and roll it into sort of a thin noodle, um, maybe a, a little more than that. Like so. And I'm gonna take this and start with this first easy joint here and I'm gonna mush it all into this joint around here, which is, I suspect, the one that it's probably leaking from, but uh, to be safe, we want to we wanna do them all. And um, the good thing about this putty is that it, it's specifically able to set underwater um, or when wet, but all the same, I am going to dry the joint as best as I can, um, just in case, but it, it specifically is um, possible to use this putty completely underwater. It, 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 is, it is a... Um, designed for that purpose. So um, I'm not sure, can we see that on the camera? I'll try not to block it too much with my hands, but um, I'm just gonna feed my noodle, that sounds dirty, <laughs> feed the putty directly into the, uh, into the joint here. Oh, it's sticky stuff. Um, And the packet says that you've got about 15 minutes to work with this stuff, 12 or 12 minutes to work with this stuff um, after you mix it before it gets too um, hard and tacky. Hmm. It wants to bond to my fingers more than the... Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So I'm just working my way along, pushing the putty into that joint as much as I can. Ugh. It's very sticky stuff, that's for sure. I'm making a mess on the nice black finish of my fitting, so I'll try not to touch it. Uh, yeah. You want to push it in as hard as you can to make sure that it's squeezing into every little possible seam. So you probably do this in two or three passes. The first pass, the, the purpose is to get the bulk of the material into the joint. And then the second pass will be to um, squish it down and smooth it out as much as possible. Well, I judged that amount of material pretty well. Um, you can see I just need a little bit more. I've run out just with about a centimetre more to go, so plenty more here. So now that I've got putty in the joint, I've got to make sure that it's forced in, like with as much pressure 
as possible to really fill up every little crevice. So I'm just pressing it in. And then when it spills over the edge, um, I fold it back onto itself and push it down again. Because you want it to be really compacted in there so it's a solid seal. You also want to make sure that the surface of it is pretty smooth because um, that'll reduce any restriction on water flow. Um, it'll prevent you know, any weird turbulence in the pipe as well. Um, so get it as smooth as possible. And that's the easy one. <laughs> the next one now is going to be at the other side of that fitting. I'm going to be forcing the putty into the joint on the same fitting, but on the other side. I think that's a less likely point of water ingress because it's further away from the joint that's leaking. Um, I would suspect it to be leaking from this joint up here if it was leaking from that side of the of the conversion fitting that's in, internal in here. But um, just to be safe, I'm going to fill them both because it could be possible that there's a point of ingress through the glue through here and then out of this fitting, which is leaking about here. So, um, yep, better safe than sorry. I got it out, may as well fill both sides of it. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Probably don't have enough putty here. I'll probably have to mix up some more, but um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get going. This putty's starting to get a little bit harder. So try to get a move on. Mm, might actually be easier from this side. I'll piece it. No. That didn't work. There we go. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you this one because it's like right up in there, but uh, I'll just put this on time lapse and try and show you the end result once I'm done. Okay, so I've filled the joints with the putty. You can see this front one really obviously where I've filled it, but the, the back one's a little harder to see. Um, I'm going to leave this for probably overnight, to be honest, to, um, to set completely before I, um, I reinstall it. But um, before I leave it, I am just going to reapply primer onto this outside bit here, um, sand away, well first I'll sand away as much of this uh, dried, crusty, not very well bonded, bonded PVC cement, um, then I'm going to apply primer, then I'm going to very carefully and neatly apply new PVC glue in all around this joint as well, just to one, make it look nicer, and two, um, just as a second double, uh, double seal, a, again attempt to seal from the outside. All right, okay, so I've reassembled the plumbing. Uh, you can see where I've, not as cleanly as I would have liked, but I, I have put on a substantial amount of that green uh, high pressure PVC cement um, here. And for good measure, I filled this joint as well, even though this joint wasn't leaking, it was only this one that was leaking. The um, putty that is much more important is fully cured and I actually put on two full layers of it onto the interior of those joints. So um, completely filled up those gaps that were uh, present between the internal conversion fitting and um, this external union sleeve. Uh, I've reattached the plumbing. Um, this valve is now open. Uh, this valve is still closed. So I'm gonna open that valve and you can watch my flow meter and we'll see if we get any leaks. There we go. I'm just slowly opening it until it gets all the way open. There we go. So that's uh, about, call that 1100, 1150 
liters per hour. And don't mind that noise, that will just be um, some overflow that needs to be now tuned up in the drain um, as a result of the pressure change. So I can just tune that on my gate valve here, which I'll do in a minute to get rid of that noise. Um, but more importantly, dry, dry. It appears as though I have fixed the issue. I don't see any water just reaching around. Hand is dry. Excellent. We have no leaking anywhere. That is a dry hand. So there we go. I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'm going to have to retune my um, bean animal overflow to get rid of that gurgling noise, which is only as a result of me drastically changing the pressure situation in the tank by now having both of my returns fully open. Um, but that's, that's an easy fix for me. Um, so yeah, based off my so far 30 seconds of success, but we'll, um, I'd say this stuff has been pretty uh, successful in fixing the leak. So if you're interested in replicating what I've done or fixing a leak in the same way, it's the, uh, the Shelley's Aqua Need, as well as um, some of this Protec PVC cement for pressure pipes, um, which is what I used on the external side. Um, but yeah, for, for the, that type of leak, I'd probably say this stuff is more likely to be successful if you're um, not fully replacing the fittings. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the ReefNode YouTube channel. Bye for now.